Hey everybody, thanks again for uh, joining me on one of my projects. I, uh, I apologize in advance if there is any banging in the background. I think my upstairs neighbor, Mr. Stompy, is, is finally moving out. I've had a long line of great upstairs neighbors. Before Mr. Stompy, there was this drunken music producer who used to pass out while producing music, only to leave a three-second loop of music playing all night at high volume over and over and over again. Yeah, good times. Uh, before him was the lady with the loud voice and the nasally Brooklyn accent who would constantly like scream at her daughter who would then in turn begin to cry at the top of her lungs and uh, Before that was a girl who was home during the day and gone at night. I liked her Hopefully someone like that will move in again this time But uh, anyway, let's get back on target here uh, this is uh, just a short video for my 3D printing fans, and uh, frankly, it is just a flimsy excuse to show off my new channel intro. Uh, so hopefully you like that. And uh, the girl in the video is Christina, and uh, she'll be my uh, channel's new spokesmodel. So please feel free to welcome her in the comments. So what did you think of her? Of who? The woman in the red dress. I designed her. She, um, well, she doesn't talk very much, but, but if you'd like to meet her... I can arrange a much more personalized bill. You... The digital pimp hard at work. I pay no attention to these hypocrites, Neo. To deny our own impulses is to deny the very thing that makes us human. Oh, and uh, don't worry, Alexa will be uh, continuing her role as my co-host. Oh, great. So going back to this video, I wanted to do a few more 3D printing videos before this channel transitions more towards radio-controlled airplanes, quadcopters, and FPV, first person view, flying of both of them now that the weather's here and it's starting to warm up and I can get out and fly again. So if you're interested in those sorts of videos and feel free to check out some of my earlier ones. Uh, you can see me flying cool stuff like this. wearing sexy goggles like this. So this is how I pilot my aircraft most of the time, using video cameras with live video feeds uh, on the actual aircraft that I watch using the video goggles. This gives me a first-person view of the flight, so it feels just like I'm a pilot. I really can't tell you how much fun it is to do this, uh, and it's cathartic. Um, it's so relaxing and awesome. Uh, it's, it's, it's the best thing after work, um, just to chill out and uh, fly around like that. So anyway, look more forward to more videos of that type in the future. But in the meantime, let's talk about 3D printing. Uh, so we're going to talk about printing replacement parts for a vehicle today. Uh, in the past, I've made a few little odds and ends and shared them on Thingiverse. My first one was an interior trim panel for the Honda CRX that I owned back in the day. Later, I made a couple of simple cup holder adapters for my truck. Uh, I also made a power station for my coworker's Hummer. She wanted something that would fit into the coin pocket by the dash and uh, gave me an existing product to scavenge for parts. Uh, another thing that I made for my own truck was this simple thing to lock the hatch door open so uh, if I parked on a hill or it was windy, the door would not try to swing close and kill me. Uh, lastly, I designed this exterior trim panel for my car because the paint was chipping off the old one. Uh, I thought it would look cool if I made a replacement that was made from like carbon fiber nylon or something like that. 
but before I printed it, however, well, do you remember the lady I just talked about with the Hummer? She's a very small lady in a very big truck, and apparently she didn't see my car while pulling out of the parking spot next to it and ran it over. On the bright side, when I got it fixed, the body shop gave me extra paint, so I was able to use that paint to uh, touch up the trim panel, and uh, therefore it did not have to use the uh, 3D printed version after all. See how things turn out for the best after all? There's always a silver lining. But uh, so far all these things have been minor accessories, but today we're going to make something a little more structural. You see, I have this truck that I affectionately refer to as the red thing. The red thing had some major exhaust issues, so I had most of it replaced at a local garage. Unfortunately, when I got the truck back, it sounded really weird. Whenever I let off the gas or applied the brakes, the exhaust would resonate somehow and vibrate the truck as if uh, they had directly coupled the exhaust to the frame or something. After some investigation, I found that the genius mechanic had run the exhaust in a way that it was actually touching the drive shaft. So this picture was taken after I removed the exhaust hanger from just behind the muffler to allow the pipe to drop down a few inches. But before I did this, these two things were touching. And this spins, so that really is a bad thing. So our project today is to see if we can design and print a new exhaust hanger that is a bit longer than the stock one. Now these come in all shapes and sizes, as you can see here, but mine is similar to this one and is a rubber piece that is used for holding the exhaust in place while both insulating vibrations and allowing for some slop if things aren't perfectly aligned, which they never are. So I fired up Fusion 360 and started to draw the parts. I started with the two inner holes, one of which later I upped to uh, 12 millimeters instead of 10. I set them at 60 millimeters apart. And then to get the outside uh, rounded edge, I used circles um, that are centered on the edges of the inner holes, and they're 45 millimeters in diameter. Um, then I, to do the uh, little slots on the H, I referenced um, a, oh, 13 millimeters off of the center line. And then from that line, I did uh, an offset of two millimeters on either side for a four millimeter wide slot and drew arcs to combine it to create my slot and then um, the T section in the center there, the eye, the center of the eye there is four millimeters and that really was the extent of the sketch. Pretty simple actually, although it looks kind of complex. And then extruded the whole thing up by 20 millimeters, as you can see here. And then, like any good product, we start to round the edges. So I rounded the inner edges, as you can see, and then I added some chamfers uh, to the corners uh, to make it similar to the original. I didn't bother making it slightly hourglass shaped like the original because I didn't feel that was necessary. But I did add the chamfers just for looks. And I used chamfers instead of um, fillets, fillets being round, chamfers just being 45 degree angles on the edges because they're, they print better, uh, 3D print better, especially on the underside. So that's what I did. After the CAD work, I fired up my little CR7 printer and loaded up some NinjaTech Cheetah, which is a semi-flexible TPU filament. I love my little CR7 and I use it often as I can actually get better prints on it sometimes than even my much more expensive printers. Uh, it just goes to show you that even a $180 printer nowadays can be useful, although I do confess to adding a $20 heated bed and a $50 power supply to support it. But hey, look at the print quality that this thing can pull off. The original exhaust hanger for my truck was made from a medium to hard rubber. Since my replacement was going to be exposed to constant abuse and tugging and twisting, I used something like uh, four or five perimeters and 50% infill. Uh, it turns out that this produced something that was way too stiff. I also noticed that I had to enlarge one of the holes for a less stressful installation since the holes were not going to expand as readily as normal rubber. 
So I tweaked the CAD model and printed it out again with less perimeters and less infill. The result was something that was slightly stiffer than the original, but still very serviceable. So I went ahead and installed it in my truck. Then it was time for a test drive. And it worked. No more hideous vibrations. My apologies, by the way, for not having any audio or video of the truck before I replaced the part, but I had already started the project before I realized that I should be documenting it. Um, if you ever drove over the rumble strips on the side of the highway, then that's pretty much what it was like, though. So I can hear you keyboard warriors clanking away in the comments right now. You so stupid. That part is going to melt low. Um, I did also think that maybe that was going to be the case, and I was ready to print some PEK or P -E -K -K insulators uh, for the inside of the mounting holes if it did happen. But I've been driving this uh, truck with that part installed for over three weeks now without incident, no melting, no problems. So I think it's going to be fine. Hey, um, speaking of PEKK, -K, if you liked the video I did on it a while back, I am planning on a follow-up video with some more practical real-life uses for it. So, um, by the way, if, you know, if any, one more person asks me if PEKK -K is food safe or tells me that I'm poisoning myself by having a Teflon frying pan sit with nothing in it while on medium heat, Seriously though, don't ever worry about me. I may act like a goofball, but I have worked in dangerous environments and around toxic chemicals all my life, and I feel confident with my own risk assessments. However, I'm just a strange guy on a YouTube channel, so as the adults that you are, you should never blindly follow my example, and instead do your own research and follow your own safety guidelines and consciences. And conversely, you are just an unknown internet commenter with bad spelling and grammar, so forgive me if I do not accept your pseudoscientific claptrap with no reference sources at all at face value. That isn't to say that I don't appreciate being corrected or being given advice, because many of you have given me great tips and advice over the last few years, and uh, I do definitely appreciate it. But you know, as a guideline, please try to include some sort of proof or personal antidote, at least, to make your case. You know, if your comment starts with, I heard that, it's probably going to be ignored. So anyway, yes, I will be doing another PEKK -K video in the next few weeks, so stay tuned to that. And um, I think that pretty much wraps up my this video, but, um, you know, before I go, um, I just want to say, you know, I know Many people start out 3D printing um, by just printing out little knickknacks from Thingiverse, and that's perfectly fine. But I, I do feel that the real advantage to 3D printing is uh, where you combine the power of 3D modeling, your own parts and products, with the 3D printer. Um, you know, you might be intimidated by something like Fusion 360, but it really is pretty friendly to use and there are a vast number of tutorials on YouTube to help you get started. But you don't have to use a, a, like a real CAD package like that to do your modeling. I used to do SketchUp. I, I used to use SketchUp uh, for half the examples I showed today and, and used it for many years before I switched to Fusion 360. Um, you could also use something like Tinkercad. It, it doesn't really matter, but I do highly recommend trying some sort of design software if you really want to get the most out of your 3D printer. And probably you'll, you'll realize that you're, it's a lot more fun when you can create your own 
things and uh, realize your own products. Well, I think that about wraps up this video. Um, I hope you found some entertainment inspiration from it. Uh, before you go, I have some you know, exciting personal news to share. So if you're interested, then stick around. And uh, if you could care less or you, know, you have other things to do, then that's cool. And uh, cheers, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Okay, to the uh, two or three of you who stuck around, hello, and uh, thanks for taking an interest. Uh, so anyway, here's the scoop. I had a fan, that's to say a fan of my books, not my YouTube channel, approach me on Facebook the other day and ask if I wanted to turn my books into audiobooks. So as you might have seen from my Mr. Stompy video a while back, I'm definitely interested in doing this, but it's also evident that I'm probably not the best person to do the reading. So anyway, it turns out that this guy is a voice actor and he's a massive fan of my books and would like to create, you know, audiobook versions of them for me. So how awesome is that? Um, you know, he's going to get me some reading samples in a few weeks and then if I like him, we'll negotiate a deal, but I'm, I'm super excited about this. Um, you know, I think it's going to work out well because since he's a fan, he already knows and understands the books. So his performance should be, you know, all the better for it. Uh, I, I really can't wait for this. I think it's, I think it's going to be great. So I believe he wants to start with my very first book, which is uh, Zero Calvin, uh, which is actually where my channel name comes from. So if you stuck around, you just learned a fun fact that nobody else knows. How about that? Um, but anyway, Zero Calvin is the first of a trilogy, and uh, here's what it's about. Calvin Jones, a computer programmer in his mid-twenties, decides to skip work and meet his girlfriend at the beach instead. However, because of an accident, a trip to the hospital, death, and cryogenic freezing, he never quite makes it there. When Calvin is revived, he finds himself in a utopian society 300 years in the future. But every society has its peculiarities. This one happens to be governed by an artificial intelligence named Ariel. Using Ariel, this society has been able to identify its stupid, lazy, or otherwise detrimental individuals and kill them. The result is a civilization of intelligent, hardworking inhabitants, except for Calvin. Will Calvin be able to adapt to his new surroundings, or will the learning curve be too steep for him to survive? So that's the gist of the book. Um, if you're interested in reading it or any of my other books, then you can go to briankramerbooks.com to see if anything catches your fancy or go straight to Amazon. I'll leave a link to both in the description. Okay, that, uh, that's it for now. I think that's all I have to share. Uh, thanks again for sticking around. I appreciate it. And uh, wish me luck, and I'll see you all in my next video. Cheers.